Need to improve your club on Ultimate Team? Check out IGDM for safe and reliable coins with the link in the description. Get an extra 5% discount with code NA. What's good, y'all? For this video, I'm going to show you guys the 442. This 442 is something that I got um, mostly inspired from watching Atletico Madrid and Diego Simeone's style of play. It's a pretty good formation because I found it to be pretty consistent in what every single player on the pitch has to offer. So it's not a one-sided formation really, it really gets everyone involved in the attack and it gets them involved equally and it's less dependent on AI movement. So if you're a person that's not really a fan of formations like the 4-2-2-2, sorry the 4 triple 2 as we'll call it, or the 4 2 3 one or formations like that that are really dependent on the cams or the AI in that formation, and you just want a formation where the players just are like more straightforward and consistent on what they're doing. Then using a formation like the 442 is going to be perfect for you. The reason why I say that is because the moment you get the ball back in defense, right off the bat, everything that your attack is going to do or your attacking players is going to be straightforward and simple. It's not going to be dependent on any unique AI. This isn't to say that this formation has less attacking, AI, rather that this formation has more consistent attacking AI in the point where we want attacking AI that's doing a similar thing consistently and forcing you that same attacking AI run rather than utilizing the attacking AI that's in place in the 4-2-3 on and the 4 triple 2 where it heavily relies on open space. I'll go more into detail with the custom tactics but as you can see right now this is the team that I used for it. Not much to it really. Um, custom tactics I have it set to my ultra attacking but this is not an ultra attacking formation. So if you guys want to consider this a maybe a I, I would call this like a regular formation honestly. This is probably a formation that you would love to start your game with or start your um yeah, sort of match with basically. But defensive style balance width 38, depth 62. The objective of 38 width is to force your player to play out wide and stick out wide. We want our left mid and our left back to, um, or our right mid and our right back to contain the other player out wide because once you have those wide, that wide midfielder and that um, fullback containing that ball and the other player to the touchline, it's going to be a lot harder for them to find a passing option. And especially with cutbacks being nerfed, I found 38 to just be perfect because the objective in the end is to force the other player to stay out wide and since they don't have a cutback option then that's going to be an issue for them to get out of that wide position. And since obviously you still have that 4-4-2 defensive structure, that midfield is going to be overloaded by your own players. So even if they do manage to bring the ball centrally, they're going to have a lot of players to have to go through. Which is what makes this formation so reliable in defense. And then the depth of 62, primarily because... Normally, I would advocate for a higher depth, but that doesn't have to be the case with this formation because this formation defensively is a formation that could eat up so much pressure in um, in the other team's attack or from the other team's attack, sorry, because of, like I said, that 4-4-2 defensive structure. Defensively, we don't have to rely on having to force recovery of the ball. We can easily force winning the ball back by letting the other player make a mistake and trying to find a pass that they don't really actually have. Again, this is because of its 4-4-2 defensive structure. This is something that you also see in the meta 4-3-2-1 videos and such. And then build a play balance of chance creation direct passing. That's really the thing of these uh, meta formations like the 4-4-2, 4-2, 4-3-2-1, 4-2-3-1, blah blah blah. Balance and direct passing is always going to be the best things for those formations because it really brings out what makes these formations the best. With all due respect to what any other content creator could have, if they suggest anything that isn't balanced and direct passing, I honestly would say that's not a good custom tactic with all due respect. Like I say in every single other video when I use this combo, direct passing is perfect for maximizing the um, basically like the long runs that players will make in behind defenders while also allowing players to still come short for the ball and allow you to still dribble past players if that's an option for you. And then a width of 42, I chose specifically 42 because this is an important number for this formation. And the reason why I say this is an important number is because it's really important that we get the wingers involved in this formation. And when you take a look at the player instructions later, you'll notice that the objective of, these, of this formation is to overload the box of your own attackers. And we're able to do this primarily through this width setting right here because we're able to allow the wingers in this formation to tuck in between the center back and the left back and right back of the other team, which allows for them to enter the box and you'll have at least four options in the box. And when it comes to a formation like this, which is naturally very defensive, we're able to make it a really good attacking formation with that in mind. And then six players in the box. If you watch all my other videos, you know this This is one of my favorite things that I just never like to change. Primarily because one, you're always going to have four regardless. And then you want to add one more for that box to box so they have the option to join in. 
and then you're gonna have one more for the attacking fullback. And again, like always, this isn't right here something that will force six players to actually be in the box. Rather, this will act as a limit for how many players will enter the box to begin with. So normally you won't see more than five really. But if for whatever reason you decide to attack with an extra player with your left stick, then that player will remain involved in the attack. Until you lose the ball, obviously. And then corners three, free kicks three. And then before I go ahead and show you guys the instructions, I just want to real quick thank you guys so much for helping me hit 20k, which I'm about to hit in just any second now. I think it was only like two videos ago, honestly, where I just hit 15k and that was a huge achievement for me. And so far the way I'm looking at it right now is uh, I just got to do this five more times to hit 100k. But regardless of that, I'm really thankful for you guys helping me reach 20k so far. And our next goal is, um, I don't even know. But I'd be asking for too much if I said 50k. But yeah, subscribe if you haven't already, obviously. Also, our Discord server is only a few members away from hitting 1,000 members, which is also a huge deal. And if you're not in there already, I would honestly say you're missing out. Because if you're looking for good discussion regarding things like um, tactics, squad building, the FIFA market, anything like that really. I can tell you right now my server is perfect for that. You can join today with a link in the description. But anyways, going straight into player instructions right here, you can see our two strikers. You can have one of them be on stay central game behind, and then the other one's gonna be on stay central mix attack. Come back on defense as well. And in simpler terms, you can look at it this way, right? This guy right here, think of, you know, Luis Suarez back when he played for Atletico, your classic number one, number nine. Someone that's just going to be in the box and be a threat in the box, finishing-wise. And then your Griezmann right here, your number 10, basically. He's going to come short and be all over the field in terms of the midfield and the attack, and the transition to be specific. But you'll notice his biggest threat is not only his shooting when he gets a chance, but also his ability to link up with the other striker. Dybala is perfect for this primarily because of that finesse shot trait. When he's on the edge of the box, he has so many good opportunities to shoot and score. And he's also just really good with the left stick dribble, so you're able to just, you know, Win yourself a lot of space and attack the box really well with him. And obviously a card like Mia Hamm is just going to be good at everything she does. And she's a threat in the box herself, so she's pretty self-explanatory. And then our left and right wing, as you can see right here, we're going to start with our left specifically, which is going to be on cut inside, game behind, get into the box or cross. When I think of an athletical player, I think of Yannick Caresco right here. But there's really not too much detail behind this position right here. What you really need to know is that in the buildup, you want to wait before you pass the, to this player right here. You want to wait for him to tuck in between the fullback and the center back, especially if you're aiming for a through ball. When you win the ball, he might be positioned to be in front of the fullback. And before you pass to him, if you're trying to give him a through ball, you want to wait and pass around before you actually give him the ball and allow him to make a run in between the fullback and the um, center back. And then we have this player specifically on get into the box for cross just because of the attacking fullback behind him, which we'll get into later. Because on the right side, as you can see right here, he does not have get into the box for cross. He's on balance with cut inside getting behind. And really why the only fact behind why we don't have this guy on get into the box for cross is because there's no overlapping fullback behind him. So we need him to dominate the wide areas of the pitch more right here. And we have our attacking fullback right here with joining the attack overlap. And the reason why now that we have get to the box across is primarily because with this attacking fullback, we need him to have space and actually like be useful in the attack. And that frees up space for our left wing right here with get to the box across to be a huge option, basically act almost as a third striker. So when he's forced into the box, this player right here can take what his spot usually was when holding that wider position, which gives this player the attacking freedom. And then it gives this player the freedom to basically dominate the width by the touchline. You won't see that on this side where it has stay back while attacking overlap. This player right here is just going to be a classic defender, really. And then you double pivot midfield right here. The midfielder on the left is going to be on balance attack, stay on edge of the box for cross, cover center. And then the one on the right is just going to be on stay back while attacking, cover center. Now, the one on the left, we only have on stay on edge of the box for cross, primarily because it's Cole Palmer right here, and he has a finesse shot trait. And since he has a finesse shot trait, I want him to be on the edge of the box because that's a perfect position for him to just abuse long shots. Now, if you don't have a player like that in that position, like maybe you don't have Gundogan or something like that, I would highly recommend you just put him on balance instead. But I have Cole Palmer, so I'm going to put him on stay on the edge of the box. But this player is basically just going to act as a number eight, regardless of whatever you put on him. And then the CDM right here, not an actual CDM because he's still going to be next to your number eight in the buildup. But you want to look at him as a CDM because he's probably going to be defending more often than not. But it's more appropriate to call him a box to box as well. But yes, yeah, stay back while attacking on this guy with cover center as well. And then your two center backs right here are just going to be completely default. And your keeper is going to be on comes across the sweeper keeper. What set this 
formation away from any other formation as i spoke about earlier is how straightforward this formation is specifically in the build-up when you have those wingers tucking in between the fullback and the center back they are going to be doing those really consistently this is different to formations like the 4 triple 2 and the 4 2 3 1 which are way more situational and the wingers in those formations will only really do what they see that what the ai sees is a good idea for them to do and that sounds like a good thing primarily because it is a good thing you're allowing the ai to try to find weaknesses in the defense yourself but the reality is sometimes it may feel like your team's just ghosting because your other team the other opposition your opposition i mean is just defending really stubbornly and especially after this patch where everyone's just defending with their ai with like 20 players in their own box that can get really annoying so having a formation like this where the wingers are really direct with um the runs in behind and they're basically gonna you're basically gonna be attacking the same way over and over again so you're not relying on ai or anyone to bail you out you're gonna have a more streamlined attack if that makes sense so it basically offers less uniqueness however you can basically look at it as it's gonna offer more runs in the long run think of it as quantity of runs over quality and whether that's better or not is absolutely situational that's why i would definitely this is also like for sure like formation that i usually keep in my um formations during games because if there's formations where or if there's games where my previous formations like the four triple two or the four two three one if i'm having games where those aren't working out then i can trust this four four two to work out it's also just really good at counter attacking to be honest having four players ready to go straight into the attack the moment you get your ball back there's really nothing that tops but yeah when it comes to this 442 there's not much more to say if you like this video go ahead and like comment subscribe and that's all